We are here today at our Aspen Germany Leadership Seminar, Philosophy and Practice. And I'm really happy to be here with uh, two of our participants um, who have participated in intense discussions over the last uh, couple of days. Um, and maybe you can first introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Nadia Goldbach. And, um, well, short introduction would be I grew up in Germany, then went to the University of Oxford, studied economics and management, later moved on to study development economics uh, at the London School of Economics, briefly came back to be a management consultant, and am now investing um, into healthcare, into pharmaceutical companies, medical technology, and I'm supporting those businesses to, um, to grow. Thank you so much, Nadia. Over to you. My name is Tim Arnold de Almeida from Berlin, Germany. I'm a partner at Oliver Wyman, which is an international strategy consulting firm, and I focus on the public sector. And Nadja, you came all the way here from London um, to the outsides of Berlin. Um, what made you decide to come here? Well, I've been um, hearing about Aspen Institute um, for many, many years, and uh, it's, it's fantastic to be here with so many diverse um, leaders. So what made me come here this year, I think, is to, we have a bit of a deficit of leadership and good leadership in the world these days, and also not only in the, in the public market and um, in politics, but also in some of the organizations I'm personally involved in. So what what I'm seeking today is, is, is more guidance and more reassurance that there are good leaders who are still focused on their values. Uh, so I think all of what, what we see on a day-to-day -day basis is, um, can easily make you confused about where your values are and what you should be following. And it's been really inspirational to, uh, to meet other people who, are, who want to stay true to their values and really find uh, a positive and impactful leadership style. Such as Tim. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's really exciting to finally connect with the Aspen tradition. It's such a long-standing tradition. And I feel that it's probably more precious today than it has ever been. Because we now live, live in a world of digital technologies and artificial intelligence and constant media exposure. So I think going back in a retreat, as I perceive of this event, to actually engage in intellectual discourse and philosophical reasoning is almost a, a, a privilege and something that we probably should do more often. But there's a lack of opportunity because there are so many pressures coming from all sides. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity. And Tim, what would you say makes a good leader? Oh, well, I, I, I believe that a leader is a person who is able to hold a system a social system that has been entrusted to him or her could be in a formal role, formal capacity, or an informal role. Could be in your family, could be in your community, or in a large corporation, or even uh, a government organization. Uh, I think systemic analysis is very important, and of course, a good foundation in values. And Nadia, what do you think makes a good leader? Yeah, I think my answer would be would be similar. It's it's obviously important that you give direction and you know you, you paint a strategy and a vision so that people know where you're heading and where you want to head. And that should obviously be based on values, on values that, you know, everyone can relate to. And then bringing that to life and living those values in a day-to-day -day way. And I think we talked today about empathy as well. So having having that empathy as a leader, I think is becoming more and more important to make sure that everyone actually wants to follow you and um, and wants you, you all to achieve that vision. And our seminar is called Philosophy and Practice. And uh, that really means that we are looking into philosophy. Um, and you read a lot of texts before you came here. Um, do you have a favorite philosopher? So I think what I, what I just said about, um, about leadership is, is actually something which was reflected in, in some of the texts which, were, which we were reading. So some of the earlier ones like Plato and, and Aristotle, focusing very much on the individual, on, on knowledge, on enlightenment. And then something which really touched me and I was, I was really grateful to, to have this included in, in the text was the uh, noddings, mm -hmm. who, who's, who's bringing this idea of care and uh, and and empathy and how 
um, caring for people uh, and and caring caring about others can actually enable us to to be better leaders to to um, and to write into into policy practice. Thank you so much, Nadia. Do you, Tim, have a favorite philosopher among those who we have read so far? <laughs> That's difficult to answer. I, 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 for me, it was wonderful to revisit some of the ancient philosophers whom I last saw in, in, in school, basically, and, and partially at, at university. My favorite amongst the well-known authors is, is Frederick Hayek. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful to come back to him now with communism being a distant past, but his current relevance seems huge in terms of defending our liberties against new threats to our freedoms, um, both within our democratic system and in the international order. And then, yes, Nell Nordings, Nadia, I fully agree. Uh, she, she must have been a wonderful woman. Um, completely different perspective, the small units reminded me a bit of communitarianism, but I had never heard of her. Unfortunately, she died last year, but she, she must have been a wonderful woman, a mother of 10, a long-time mathematician, mathematics teacher, and only then she joined academia and became so famous for her work on, on care and, um, um, and social policy, actually. So let me last ask you, Nadia, is there something which surprised you so far in the seminar? Um, I mean, I, I suppose it, it's it's... So the the degree of genuine genuity and and curiosity, which we're all we're all an incredibly diverse group, people from from Ukraine, from from Kosovo, from um, the healthcare sector, from you know policy making, from business. So and the openness with which, which we are discussing, and you know, g despite this this backdrop and uh, uh, in which we live today, I think has been really inspiring. And I've certainly been taking away so much, not only from our discussions about the philosophy, but also just those discussions around dinner, uh, around lunch. So the the kind of the, the wealth of of inspiration and 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 new guidance for my for myself has been uh, exceeding my expectations. I must say. And Tim, do you think you will stay in touch? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Lots of surprises for me. I learned from you about Aspen, the most resilient tree. And also having the moderators is a wonderful way of um, reflecting and discussing, which I haven't enjoyed in many, many years. Um, and my personal surprise was I can switch off my iPhone for three, <laughs> for three days, which you didn't insist on, but I announced to everybody I'm going to do this. And okay. it's so liberating. Thank you so much uh, to both of you for being here, being such an inspiring, open and um, and just very kind and nice leaders and participants. So thank you very, very much. Thank you for having thank us. You thank you. And thanks to your team as well. Yeah. Oh, big times. <laughs> thank you.